In strategic crisis leadership, the strategic part is more than just your checklist of emergency response. It's how do you make good decisions in the midst of an unexpected, high-consequence situation? People are watching, and all of a sudden, you've got to make good decisions. Crises magnify the significance of small weaknesses. For example, it's been 25 years since the Exxon Valdez hit, and this is a good example that shows the long-term impact of a small weakness that actually impacted Exxon at the time and still does today. Larry Rawl was the CEO of Exxon at the time and was actually doing a good job. But Larry Rawl had a small weakness, which was that he didn't like to speak to the media. During normal times, that's not a problem. He had his communications people. Then the Exxon Valdez hit, and 11 million gallons of crude oil went into Prince William Sound. At that point in time, we expected Exxon to come forward to take charge and show good crisis leadership. But Larry Rawl said, I'm not speaking to the media. People had the impression that Exxon didn't care, and they were not well managed, and they were trying to hide something, because Larry Rawl would not speak to the media. You cannot grow an organization unless you protect the core assets of the organization. When a crisis hits, these are the things you want to protect. Most people think, yeah, we're crisis prepared. They tell us how they're prepared for emergencies. Evacuation, notifications of a team and whomever, mobilizing the right resources, that's emergency response. These are the things that happen in the first 24 hours. If something happens, you must react. The building is burning. You need to put out the fire. You need to respond. A good leader also anticipates, what are we doing now? What are the long-term consequences? Let's anticipate where this thing is headed, not only short-term, but also long-term. The tactical approach is more about the process, where you're following your checklist of things to do. Being strategic has to do more with your judgment and making the right decisions and doing the right things. So how do you decide on the right things to do when a crisis hits? The Army's be, know, do model says that crisis leadership is more about who you are than what you know. Be, know, and do stands for vision, communication, and caring. How do you have vision when a crisis hits? First, focus on core assets. What are the core assets at risk? Second, focus on the impact to stakeholders. Third, anticipate where you're headed. Dr. Vince Covello of the Center for Risk Communication did a study showing that people don't retain information in high-consequence situations. People can retain three key messages. If you go to four or more, they don't remember and it gets all jumbled up. The second thing is that the key messages need to be 7 to 12 words. Keep your messaging as simple as you possibly can. As far as timing is concerned, Colin Powell says that he has what he calls his 40-70 rule. Basically, the message here is that you need to make decisions with partial information once the information is in the 40 to 70 percent range. If you wait until you get 100 percent, it's going to be too late. Timing is of critical importance when you handle a crisis. Dr. Cavello asked, what traits do you need to have in order to be good at handling a crisis? One thing that was more important than everything else combined was that you must come across as caring. You must behave in a way that leads people to believe that you care. The gold standard for corporate crisis management was arguably set by James Burke, who was the CEO of Johnson & Johnson back in September of 1982 when the Tylenol crisis hit. Someone was taking Tylenol off the shelves, putting cyanide in it, and putting it back on the shelves in Chicago. Ultimately, seven people were dead. James Burke had to make a defining decision. His defining decision was to take all the Tylenol, $110 million worth of product, off the shelves nationwide. Anticipation is one of those things that define good crisis leadership. James Burke anticipated. He imagined what could be going wrong with the situation. In a crisis, you want caring to be involved with everything that you do. How do you do that? Here are five guiding principles that apply to just about any organization. 1. Put the well-being of people first. If you put anything before people, people are going to be outraged. 2. Assume the appropriate responsibility, even if it wasn't your fault, like the Tylenol situation with James Burke. 3. Address the needs of all stakeholders in a timely manner. 4. All decisions and actions should be based on honesty and legal and ethical guidelines. 5. Practice available, visible, and open communications with all impacted parties. Communication is the foundation. Get good information, give good information, and be visible to those stakeholders who are impacted.
If you do these things, even if you make a wrong decision, you're still going to be between the guardrails, if you will. People will be much more forgiving and it will help you from appearing negligent or irresponsible. People will realize that we're looking out for people. We're caring. We're taking responsibility. We're addressing the needs of all the stakeholders on a timely basis. We're honest. We're legal. We're ethical. We're visible. We're communicating.